Your forecast first. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Uh, looks like a cold tundra there, Gibson City. The sun setting, you can see on the horizon, the blue to the sky and the little bit of orange there as well with the snow-covered field. Our temperatures are in the single digits again. We have dropped off, but it's quite a bit warmer in Springfield and Effingham. The winds have turned out of the south, so we're actually going to see that temperature start to go up. Now, the wind chill is still pretty rough. 12 below zero in Champaign, but hang in there, okay? Because we have the clear skies, but we have this southwesterly wind that's gonna help to boost the temperature back up, believe it or not. I know it normally falls during this time of the day and night, but we're gonna go up. And we're gonna explain why and just how far up we go for the weekend when we come back. WCA3 News starts. Now from WCIA3 News. I don't even have words for it. The verdict is in. Is there justice for the brutal murder of Holly Cassano? Plus, one man was shot and killed, but the man who pulled the trigger isn't charged with murder. We'll tell you who is. We're just honoring the trailblazers that we've had here at the University of Illinois. And there were many of them. How these athletes want everyone to know they're just like everybody else. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. We the jury find the defendant guilty of first degree murder. With that, a more than decade-old murder case is closed. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Michael Henslick was found guilty of killing Holly Cassano in her Muhammad home in 2009. He'll likely spend the rest of his life in prison. WCI3's Aaron Ease is live in our newsroom. And Aaron, this is the day Cassano's family has been waiting for. Yeah, Jennifer, especially Holly's mother, Tony. When the verdict was read, she cried. She says she's still processing this, but she wants to thank everyone for keeping the case and Holly on everyone's minds over the years. We, the jury, find the allegation that when the defendant committed the offense of first-degree murder, the first-degree murder was accompanied by exceptionally brutal or heinous behavior indicative of wanton cruelty was proven. On his way out of the courtroom, Michael Hensley gave a special wave to the media. It's one of the last times he'll ever see cameras in his face because he's likely to spend the rest of his life in prison. Over the last several days, the jury saw Cassano's blood-spattered home and gruesome autopsy pictures of her body, which the forensic examiner testified was stabbed more than 50 times. Did it appear that Ms. Cassano struggled with her assailant? Yes, she essentially bled to death from these sharp force stabbing. A crime lab scientist testified that Henslick's DNA was found on Cassano's body and in her home. To confirm that, investigators showed the jury the cigarette butts they say Henslick tossed away, which they used to build his DNA profile. After they arrested him, he agreed to talk. Did you kill her or not? How? Where? Have the time to, to talk with him, it was a pretty, pretty sobering feeling. Sheriff's Office Sergeant Chris Dar sat next to Henslick while he admitted killing Cassano and having sex with her dead body. That's a difficult moment where you don't want to fail the family. You don't want to fail everyone on the team who's put a lot of time and heart and soul into this. In closing arguments, Henslick's defense team tried to discredit the DNA evidence and suggested the Sheriff's Office hadn't done enough over nine years of investigating. Based on less than 1% of the available evidence, that was an argument prosecutors and the jury ultimately rejected, finding him guilty after just an hour of deliberating. This has been a case that has been on my watch um, since the beginning. To be able to be a part of bringing closure to this family and to this community is, um, is a bit overwhelming for me, to be honest. Now, as Tony Cassano left the courtroom, she gave the investigators a hug. She also hugged members of the Henslick family who had also been watching the trial all week. Live in the newsroom, Aaron Eads, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Mm, interesting. All right, thank you so much, Aaron. Now, Henslick will be officially sentenced next month. He's looking at a mandatory life sentence because the jury decided he committed the crime in an especially cruel way. Prosecutors say they'll present even more evidence during a hearing for that. We have new information. A Danville man is behind bars charged with murder. Police arrested 30-year-old Reggie Haywood, who they say was involved in an armed robbery on January 19th. That led to a homeowner shooting one of the other robbers, Jordan Valdez Parrish.
Parrish later died at the hospital. His bond has been set at $10 million. Here's an update. Our Target 3 team told you about training programs in the state being cut. Today, leaders in law enforcement are asking the governor for more money. Sheriffs and the Association of Chiefs of Police are asking lawmakers and Governor Pritzker to provide $5 million in emergency money. Law enforcement leaders say they need the money for mandated training to properly execute their jobs. We deal with so many different types of people. We're dealing with people with mental illness all the time. We're dealing with people that are high on crack, high on meth. We're, we're having an overdose. We got it. We, we've got to continue to train. And without these funds, I don't know how we're going to do it. And again, that's a public safety issue. Something's got to be done. The sheriffs say the money goes to the state law enforcement training and standards board that provide required training for mobile units and police academies. A marijuana growing operation could be headed to Pyatt County. Whether that happens is up to the state. Pyatt County board members earlier this week approved a special use permit that will allow two people to build an indoor growing facility. Recreational sales aren't available in Pyatt County, but there aren't restrictions on commercially growing it. The state will decide whether to award the license by July 1st. This is a follow-up for you. The city of Decatur held a job fair today looking for census workers. The turnout was way higher than expected. It could be because they're offering $20 an hour. State money will pay for it. It'll be their job to try and get as many people counted as possible. In just a three-hour period, they signed up about 100 people. We're probably ahead of others because we're working really hard at it. And uh, you'll see the other counties step up their game eventually, but we're just out ahead of it trying to make sure we get a complete count. The census is very important to Decatur and the rest of the state. Recent totals have shown Illinois could lose a congressional seat if the numbers stay the same. March Madness is just a month away, so should college athletes get paid for their name or likeness being used? Representative Emanuel Welsh says yes and is pushing a student athlete endorsement act. The bill would let college athletes get paid and would prohibit the NCAA from punishing students who do or universities they go to. It also wouldn't let universities pay the students. Uh, the bill is waiting for a vote in the Illinois Senate. U of I men's basketball is out of town this weekend, and the women's side doesn't play until Sunday, but people can get the college basketball they need before that. That's right. The U of I men's and women's wheelchair basketball teams are hosting their only home tournament of the season this weekend. The women's teams are taking time to honor the women who came before them. WCI 3's Andy Olson's in the control room tonight. So, Andy, what exactly are they doing? Well, Paul, every women's side in the tourney is wearing warm-up shirts that say equality on the front. Those of the U of I say it's to honor the women that helped set up the program back in the 1950s. Now, they play basketball a little differently, but they'll tell you it's the same as what you watch at the State Farm Center. There is more physicality in wheelchair basketball versus running basketball. Women's, women's coach Stephanie Wheeler says that's a common misconception. While honoring women with their equality shirts, Wheeler also says the shirts show them how far they still need to go. But we're also here to educate um, and change the lens and paradigm that people see disability through. And so while this isn't the only way to be disabled, I think that this is one way that we can start showing people that they can and should have higher expectations of people who do have disabilities. The teams are also collecting donations for the sports bra project all weekend. Nonprofit says a lack of sports bra prevents girls from participating in athletics. Donations from the tournament will go to areas in the U.S. and abroad where they don't have access to them. Now, the men's teams will have their own night of honor as well. It is Military Appreciation Night tomorrow at 6 p.m. Live in the control room, Andy Olson, WCIA3, your local news leader. Sounds like a great opportunity to go out and support the teams and some great causes as well. Andy, thanks. Well, it looked at first like a season-ending injury, so what are the chances? Io is back in the court tomorrow against Rutgers. Also tonight, where were you 30 years ago today? If it was in Champaign County, you likely could not forget it. And a beautiful shot of the sun setting. This is our roofing dog, Inet Flooring America camera in Danville. Love the color there to the sky. Don't like these numbers though. Yeah, it was minus six this morning. That is 27 degrees below normal for the low. And we hit eight for a high. Coming back, warming up. We'll talk about the winds calming down and how we've got a little bit of rain in the forecast next.